What's up guys, Sila here, and we are back with another mount guide, this time taking a look at how you get the reins of the rusted proto-drake. It's quite a cool sort of reddish looking proto-drake, and it comes from the Glory of the Ulduar Raider 10-man achievement series. So, all these achievements are soloable, but that doesn't mean you are going to be able to solo them. But in this video, I will be you know, going over the mechanics and I'll be doing the vast majority of them solo. So you get an idea of how you can actually solo them. But as I said, you may need to recruit a friend to, to come in and do the, these achievements. So make sure you are sat on Tenman. If you don't know where Ulduar is, Ulduar is located in Storm Peaks, which is in Northrend. It's a level 80 instance. So... You're going to need to be level 90, you're going to need like 500 plus item level to even consider solo in this. And, yep, as you see, located in the top of Storm Peaks. Make sure it's set to 10 man difficulty, because if you're on 25 man, you're going to get achievements for a completely different, like, mount altogether. So make sure you're on 10 man. If you don't know how to do that, right click on your character portrait, go down to dungeon um, raid size, I think it's called, and set it to 10 player. So now we're inside, we're gonna have, in this achievement guide series, we're gonna have um, a few sort of, I'm gonna assume that you understand, you know, you've been to all the while before, you have a basic understanding of the bosses, and you understand where to go. Because I'm not gonna be doing the full run, I'm not gonna be doing trash pack by trash pack, we're gonna be more like skipping the trash and taking you to the bosses. So the first boss up, the first thing you need to know, make sure you speak to the law keeper, do not speak to Brom, not Brom, Bron. <laughs> Too much League of Legends. Make sure you speak to the Law Keeper and not Bran. Because if you speak to Bran, um, it's going to make the fight an easy version, which you won't get the achievement for. So make sure you speak to the Law Keeper. And when you head towards the boss, do not kill any of the pillars on the left and right side. Just head straight to the boss. Now you'll know that you've done it, uh, you've done it right by looking up. And if you see in the top right corner, you'll see one of the like gems is Sparkler. If all the four gems are sparkly around this sort of area, then that means you've got the boss set on hard difficulty, which is what we want. So make sure you've got the four sparkly gems. If you haven't, I believe you can go outside and reset the instance and it'll reset the sort of whole trash. But make sure you've got those sparkly gems, otherwise the boss won't be set on hard mode because in Ulduar there wasn't a, a heroic difficulty. Instead, what you had to do was each boss had like a mechanism that made it more difficult. And most of those more difficult uh, mechanisms are what you get the, like, achievement from. So, yeah, make sure you got the four spikely gems. Head down to this gate, and when you kill all this trash here, the boss will be summoned. So, to solo this fight, um, what you want to do is have two demolishers. Now, this is a, fight, a very, very, very difficult fight. Basically, you need to kill it with the four gems active, which means he gets more powers, in a sense, in the fight. He gets, like, light beams and adds and all different crazy stuff that's going to be doing a lot of damage to you. So the way I solo this fight is by having a demolisher in the room already. And um, you'll see where I put it. I put it to the right-hand side. And then I get in a demolisher myself. Now, the reason we do this is because demolishers deal the most damage. All these vehicles skill with gear as well, so the more gear you are, the more HP and damage it'll do. But demolishers do more damage because of uh, an ability they've got called Pyrite. They can, you know, fire Pyrite at the bob at the boss, and the Pyrite will stack. And every stack of Pyrite you have on the boss, the more damage it'll take. So you want to kind of like throw Pyrite on, wait for it to, you know, to be about to be despawned. If you can see in the right hand side there, that's where I put my second demolisher, and you'll see why in a second. So, I throw Pyrite on, I throw a couple of, like, you know, number one ability, whatever it's called, like the Cannon Barrage or whatever, and then I throw the Pyrite on again, and I just keep stacking the Pyrite, you know, not throwing it on instantly, I'm waiting for its duration to be a couple of seconds away from done. Remember, the Pyrite does have a travel time, so you want to do it about three seconds before it ends, and as you can see, I'm just trying to kite him backwards. And my goal is to kite him towards the other demolisher. So when this one eventually dies or it runs out of pyrite because pyrite has, you can only do 10 pyrites maximum. Um, so by the time my, this demolisher dies, I can jump into the other demolisher. Now, the issue with doing it this way is that the longer the vehicle is unmanned, so that demolisher that I have over on the sidelines, the longer that no one's in it, the more damage it'll take, it'll just slowly take damage over time. So if I stay in this demolisher too long, the other one will naturally just die on its own. So you want to make sure that the timing is sort of balanced. 
So as you see, I just throw up on one pirate and then I run over to the other demolisher. Now remember the boss does do a knockback if you're not in a vehicle. So you want to make sure you're not in a position where he's going to knock you away from the demolisher. Because then you're not going to actually be able to get any demolisher. So then I jump in the second one. Start stacking my pirate once again and it becomes a very, very easy fight. If both of your vehicles die, you'll still have about... You can live through the boss's mechanics for about... 10-15 seconds if you pop all your cooldowns, all your defensives and stuff like that. So even if you do lose your second demolisher, you still have a little bit of time to finish him off. And if you're stacking pyrite and you're doing damage, as you can see I'm doing a lot of damage there. So with all the sparkly gems active, it's an easy kill. You don't really need to worry about any mechanics, just literally kite him around the room, keep stacking the pyrite, and you'll get the job done. So, and as I said, even if your second demolisher does die, you have a little bit of period to just go full ham and do as much D, you know, like DPS as you can outside of the demolisher. Um, if you can, if ranged, it'll be a lot easier because you'll be able to kite him without having to worry about the knockback, which deals a very, very large amount of damage. But there you go, that's the first achievement done. So the next one up is going to be Stoking the Furnace. And this we're going to head to the left hand side towards the Colossal Forge. And the achievement will be to kill uh, Ignis the Furnace Master in 4 minutes in 10 player. So as long as you do an okay amount of damage, this shouldn't be an issue at all. Now, he does an ability that will put you inside his furnace. I'm not too sure if he does that with you being on your own, because I do so much damage he didn't even get to do any mechanics. He'll also summon adds during the fight, but none of these mechanics you really need to worry about. It's literally just DPSing him down as fast as possible. So if you are a healing spec or something like that, you might want to consider having a damage spec. And this is one that you may struggle on, especially if you don't have enough damage before he puts you in his furnace. That may despawn him, I'm not too sure. So that's one that you may need some help on. The other achievement on the right hand side, uh, adjacent to the furnace master, is Iron Dwarf Medium Rare. Defeat 25 Dark Rune Guardian Dwarves with, uh, with Razor Scales Flame Breath in 10 player. So this can be done over the course of a month, a year, whatever. You can come in here and you can do one dwarf a day if you really wanted to. It doesn't matter, you don't have to do all 25 at once. And this achievement is horrible, so I'm not gonna be showing you me getting the full 25 because it's just a really, really frustrating achievement. So basically what you need to do, if you see these um, rune guardians, you need to DPS them down to about 10% without killing them. So you wanna get them as low as possible, which is a bit of an issue for me because I'm you know, geared and I don't really have many spells that do low amounts of damage. And I have to DPS them low, and then I have to wait for Razor Scale to be brought down with the Harpoons. You'll see the Harpoons become active after a, a short period of time. Uh, click both the Harpoons, Razor Scale will be brought down, and then you need to kite, oh, not kite, tank the Guardians in front of Razor Scale. And then eventually, Razor Scale will do like a Flame Breath, which does damage to the, you know, the Dark Rune monsters. And if they're low enough, it'll kill them, and then you'll get credit for one. And you need to repeat that over and over and over again until you've done 25. So this achievement is a pain, especially trying to do it in like a group, you know, like the groups that go and do achievement runs and stuff like that. Because you'll get people who just kill them, and, you know, accidentally or whatever, they'll put dots on them, or they'll just do AoE damage by accident, and it'll end up killing them off. So it becomes a very frustrating achievement to do. It's... It's one of my least favorite achievements in this game to do. And yeah, I don't, don't like it very much. So literally just keep tanking him. Wait for Razor Scale to be brought down. And that will be a about it, really. The next achievement up is north of the area that we've currently been in. And that is Heartbreaker. Now you don't need to kill any of the trash in this little area. Don't worry about that. You can just completely skip that and just walk straight towards the boss. The boss doesn't aggro the trash. So unless you get too close to the boss, they shouldn't aggro. Or close to the trash with the boss. This achievement is Heartbreaker. It's the Defeat XT002 Deconstructor after destroying his heart in 10 player. So after a little period of time, I wouldn't use any cooldowns. I'd literally just wait. Don't do any damage to him because his HP is going to reset anyway, so it doesn't really matter what damage you do to him now. Um, sit on your cooldowns, don't do anything with them. And then as soon as he puts out his heart, you can pop your cooldowns then, or you can wait till after the heart phase and then pop your cooldowns. Either works fine, really. Um, as you say, I wait a little bit. And then once you kill his heart, he'll go into like a hardcore mode. He'll start doing a lot more damage. His mechanics become a lot 
like deadlier, and he'll have two new mechanics, which will be these light and dark orbs, but if you're on your own, or even with a couple of people, you don't really need to worry about them. If you get the orb on you, just kind of take it, just kind of, you know, kite the boss out of the orb, and um, it'll leave like a void zone on the ground, basically. Um, the issue with this boss is he does percentage damage on his tantrum, so you will need to use a defensive and Hopefully you've got some form of healing cooldown as well, because if you get to the point where he does a second tantrum and you're not full HP or you don't have a huge defensive CD, you're probably going to die because, as I said, it does percentage damage. It isn't, like, only does 1k, it does all of your HP, basically. So make sure you're using um, defensives and healing CDs for the tantrums just to keep yourself up. If you're with multiple people, just make sure they kite the debuffs out of the, the raid. They don't really do too much anymore anyway, but, you know, just in case. So we're going to head up the stairs after killing XT and we're going to click on this Uldua teleporter and then we're going to go to the antechamber of Uldua. And that's going to take you into a, a lower section of Uldua and we want to go to the assembly of iron which you seen was on the left hand side. So when you get to the assembly of iron the achievement here is going to be I choose you Steelbreaker. And it's to defeat the assembly of iron with Steelbreaker as the last member alive. So basically for that this achievement you'll see three different types of mobs. And you want to make sure Steelbreaker is the last one alive. Now, the it's kind of old school uh, tactic for this was to kill the little guy first, kill the medium guy second, and kill the big guy third. As you see, I've marked them with a skull, cross, and triangle, just in case you need a bit more help. Um, but between the X and the skull, it doesn't really matter which one you kill first. You should have enough damage to kill them to the point where the mechanics aren't too much of an issue. But basically, every time you kill one, the other two become empowered. So their mechanics become a little bit more advanced, so obviously when the, there's only one left, his mechanics are going to be a lot more in-depth. Uh, the Rune Master puts down runes on the ground. If the bosses are stood in them, they're going to do more damage. Uh, the little guy does, like, chain lightnings and castable stuff. And the big guy, when he's on his own, he does a fusion punch, which will kill you after a minute. So, basically, it's a little bit of a race against the clock if you don't have huge amounts of DPS. So, I would recommend saving your larger CDs for when he's the only one alive. Because that way, you're going to make sure you don't die to it. But no matter what, even after you kill the fight, you're going to die to it. So, it kind of sucks, but once you're dead, just kind of run back in. So, next up, we're going to walk towards the Shattered Walkway, which is north of this little area that we've been in. And we're going to do the achievement Disarmed, which is to destroy both of Colligran's arms and then Colligran himself within 12 seconds. So I messed this up here, um, so don't follow exactly what I do here because I messed it up a little bit. I'd end up doing too much damage to the body, but basically the boss is three bosses. He has a left arm, a right arm, and his body. And what you need to do is DPS the body down to about 50%, and then kill the left and right arm roughly, you know, at the same time. They don't have much HP, they don't die like too slow. But if you don't have too much DPS, just DPS one to half, DPS the other to half, and then finish them off. And um, I do a little bit too much damage to the body, so that causes problems for me. But you want to DPS the body down to about 50%, and then stop. Move on to the other arms. As you see, I take it way too low. I take it to like 30%, which is too low. If the body dies when you kill both the arms, you won't get the achievement as far as I know. The body needs to still be alive when the two arms are dead. So, take the body down to about 50%, kill the left and right arm, and then finish off the body, which should be on about 10-20%. And um, I would recommend using cooldowns for that last little bit, for the two arms and the body. So yeah, make sure you don't have any dots on the body, and just use single target spells. Don't DPS it down past 50, and then you should be perfectly fine. The next achievement up is Crazy Cat Leader. This one's fairly easy. Um, it's to defeat Uriaya? Uriaya? We all know we're not good at pronouncing things, but it's the woman walking around with two cats. It's the crazy cat lady. You'll you'll know her. And um, she's walking around this sort of center ring. She does a a path. Like she walks towards these two mobs, and um, which she's seen to the left then, and then she'll pat all the way back again. She doesn't actually walk across that bit where you currently stood. But the achievement is to defeat her without destroying her sanctum centuries, which are these two cats that she has by default. You can kill any of the other cats, but just don't kill those cats. So basically, don't do any AoE damage. Single target her down, and that's really it. She'll summon different types of cats during the fight, but they aren't really too much of an issue. Um, if you kill one of them, they, it does like a void zone thing, but don't kill any of them, really. Just single target her down, and you should be fine. The next one up is Hodir, and you'll find him in the icy bit. 
and the achievement here is I could say this cache was rare. And it's the defeat holder before he shatters his cache, uh, his rare cache in 10 man difficulty. And I believe that is 4 minutes? Well, give me a second. Oh, it's 2.5 minutes. My bad, my bad. Actually, it's 2 minutes 50. So you have like 2.5, 3 minutes to actually get this down. Um, Things that you need to know, or you, you can choose to know, is these different mobs that are frozen provide buffs. So if you are lacking a little bit in damage, it is worth sort of getting them out and getting the buffs from them. The sort of blue circles, if you stand in them, you'll be frozen in place. If you stand still, he puts a stacking debuff on you, so you want to be constantly either jumping or moving around. And if your DPS is a little bit low, he'll kind of like freeze the whole room. But there'll be a safe patch, which you can see by snow. If you stand on the snow, you won't be frozen. So just keep those little bit of things in, in mind. Use, make use of the buffs. Um, make sure you don't stand in the circles. Make sure you're consistently moving. And stand on the snow when that happens. Just to avoid downtime in terms of DPS. The next section is the Clash of Thunder. And this is the bit that you'll need a bit of help on. This isn't soloable. Well, that's a lie. It is soloable. But it's very, very difficult to solo. You need to... You need to be either a specific class or have specific things to go there to do it. And I couldn't figure it out myself. So we're just going to... I've got in a friend for this one. And basically it's to defeat Thorin while Sif is present in Tenman. So the reason this isn't solo below is a bit weird to solo. Is that this ring summons mobs. Like there's like a... There's two basically two sections. Uh, so two sections to this fight. There's the ring and then there's this like tunnel. And... If no one's in the ring, the mobs will walk through the gate to try and get to you, because you're in the tunnel. And once they walk through the gate, the, the boss will despawn. So you have to kind of get to the boss, or you know, complete this gauntlet, complete this tunnel, before the mobs spawn in the, the arena, and run through the gate. Now, I couldn't do it, I couldn't even use in rocket boots and stuff like that, I didn't have enough speed. There's different ways to do it, but it, it's kind of difficult. So bring in a friend, get them to sit in the arena, that's literally all they need to do. While you run up here, kill all the different mobs, and avoid these circles on the ground. If you walk through the circles uh, on, uh, on the ground, the big sort of indents, you'll get frozen. So make sure you don't walk through them. Run up here and literally just bop Thorim, just like, be like bop. And as long as you've done it quick enough, Sif will still be present, she'll still be on the little altar. You have like quite a long time. Um, shouldn't be too difficult at all, even on your own. Just run through, killing the, the boss mobs. Run to the end as fast as you can. Bop for him, and as long as you've done it fast enough, Sif will take part in the fight. And that will be the achievement done, basically. You just need to have her helping him during the fight. If you wait too long, she'll be like, Oh, you don't need me to kill these scrubs, and then she'll peace. And that's pretty much it. Very, very easy achievement. But as I said, it's difficult to solo. You need to do specific things in a weird way. And I couldn't figure it out, but I'm sure some of you out there will be able to figure it out. But, as I said, just bringing a friend makes it very, very easy to do. The next achievement is Knock, Knock, Knock on the Wood, which is to defeat Freya while leaving all her three Elder uh, alive in 10 player. So, in this room, there'll be lots of trash, and to the far left, far right, and upper right, there'll be three big Elder Trees. Do not kill them, just leave them doing their own thing, they'll just chill out. And when you pull the boss, um, she'll empower herself based on how many guardians are alive. So if all three guardians are alive, she'll empower her, her abilities. Um, I kill her a little bit too fast, and I wasn't really thinking about you guys can't do as much damage as me. So I kind of just one-shot her. Um, but I'll talk about the fight anyway, just in case you can't quite one-shot her like I do. Uh, I would recommend killing out the trash, it's just because I know I can kill the trash without it being an issue. Oh, I can't kill the trash. Uh, I can leave the trash without it being an issue. There we go. Basically, in the fight, when you kill the trash, pull the boss with the three guardians alive, and she'll have like a, a solar power. Every time you deal with one of her mechanics, her solar power will go down. One of her mechanics is these shrooms and a large sort of ad. And the, the shrooms will stop you from being silent, so you need to stand under the, the shrooms and kill the guardian or the, the sort of big ad she summons. The other one will be these three ads, and they all need to die at roughly the same time. And the other mechanic will be loads of little ads. On top of that, she'll do some like random um, solar beams that deal damage, and she'll also spawn a tree which heals her. So you want to try and kill that tree when possible. And that's about it. And then when you, if you 
get rid of all of her energy, she'll phase into phase two. But you shouldn't need to do that. Just, you know, get her energy down enough to the point that you can kill her, because the more energy she has, the more healing she receives. So just get her to the point where you, you know, you can kill her through the healing. So we're going to click on the teleporter again, and we're going to go to the Spark of Imagination next. And this is going to take you to, like, a lower part of Ulduar. And this is going to be to Mimiron's room. Now the achievement here is Firefighter. And it's basically to defeat Mimiron while activating his self-destruct mechanism. And it's this button in the background that says do not push. Or do not aggro the, the boss sort of run around the long way. Uh, click the button and then you'll start the boss's hard like mode basically. And in the hard mode the everything does more damage. But the biggest thing is this fire on the ground. It'll spread around the room and you know be kind of a, a pain. But you shouldn't really need to worry about it too much. The first phase, he'll put down landmines, which hurt if you stand in them. He'll also do like a an AoE pulse. Um, he'll stand still for a second, and he'll do like an AoE pulse. Just move away from him. It does do quite a lot of damage still. And then he'll put like a dart on you as well. Um, the fire does follow players, so if you want to put the fire in a specific place, go for it. But he will periodically clear the fire around him, um, depending on the phase. So you don't really need to worry about the fire that much. Phase 2, he's going to be a sort of machine gun turret. The things you need to worry about, I don't know if Bullet Barrage still kills you in one hit. I don't know if it's like a kill uh, mechanic or what. But basically what he'll do is he'll randomly shoot during the fight. And he'll bring down rockets from the sky which will be marked with like a red circle. And he'll do like a, a Bullet Barrage where he'll spin from like clockwise or anti-clockwise and anything in the way will take a large amount of damage but you can avoid this very easily he'll do like a spinning up so you know when he's about to do the ability and then literally just stand on the opposite side of him and make sure you're always facing his back while he's doing that mechanic if you get in his front he'll hit you with it and you might die i don't know how much damage it actually does still so just to be safe you know just stand at his back and dps him down and that's really it that you need to worry about with this this uh, part of the fight in phase 3, he'll summon his flying head thing. Um, if you don't have many ranged spells, this could be a little bit of a pain, especially the last phase would be a big pain if you don't have any ranged spells. So try and get some form of ranged spell if you have one in your talent tree or whatever, because it's going to be pretty useful. So in this phase, if you don't have any ranged spells, what you'll have to do is wait for the assault bots. And these are big ads that will spawn during this part of the fight. Kill the assault bot and loot a magnet from it. Um, use the magnet, you know, just like click on it, it'll be in the inventory, and it'll bring the boss down, it'll like suck him to the ground for a few seconds. So during that time, you'll be able to just, you know, do full DPS on him. So I save Ascendance here just so I've got it for the last phase. I would recommend doing the same as well, saving any CDs you have for the last bit. And there's the Assault Bot, so we'll loot him, we try and find it in our mess of a bag, and then we use it, and it'll bring the head down, and it means we can just go craze and do full melee damage on the head as normal. So, that's the head dead, and then he'll go into his final phase. Now, the bit that's tricky with the final phase is he's going to do some of the mechanics from all the other previous phases, like the shockwave, like the, the AoE uh, shockwave when he's in his tank mode. He'll do the rockets, he'll do, like, different mechanics, uh, the ones that we've already covered. But the tricky bit is you have to kill all three sort of parts roughly at the same time. I think you have, like, 20 or 30 seconds to kill them all. And before they repair. So say for example if I killed the bottom one and the middle one but it took me 40 seconds to kill the head then the bottom and the middle will repair and they'll be back at full HP. So you want to make sure you DPS in them down roughly at the same time and as I said if you don't have a ranged ability this could be quite a pain because you need to get the the head down and you can't actually melee it. The middle and the bottom you can melee they're in sort of melee range but the head isn't so any form of sort of range DPS you have, save for the head because you, you're going to need it. And if you need to, you know, just DPS down the head first and then go to town, you know, use CDs on the bottom and the middle and you should be fine. So that is Firefighter done. And then next up we want to go back to that uh, teleport which is at the top and then we're going to go to the Shattered Walkway. Now something very, very important, there's going to be these guardians around the room. Do not speak to them. I repeat, do not speak to them. Do not speak to them. Okay, hopefully that's clear now, but do not speak to them. 
Uh, if you speak to them, you basically mess up one of the achievements. So leave them alone, leave them doing their own thing for now. If you do speak to them, I believe you can go outside the instance and reset it, but I don't know if that's a reliable way of actually fixing it, but you might end up like completely messing yourself over if you do that. So now we're down to the last couple of achievements, and we're going to head into the Descent into Madness, and here you'll find General Vezaz. Vezax, even. And you want to clear out all the trash in this room, and there'll be certain packs that go immune, and what you need to do is they'll summon like a second ad, and kill that second ad, and then they'll become unimmune, but the trash isn't too big of a deal. So, on this fight, what we need to do, the achievement is called I Love the Smell of Saranite in the Morning, and it's to defeat General Vezax after defeating the Saranite am, uh, am, Animus in 10 player mode. So, basically, during the fight he'll summon these like Saranite blobs. Do not kill them, just leave them to do their own thing, it takes a quite a long time to get this achievement, but just literally do nothing. And the issue for people on this fight is if you don't have an interrupt, you may struggle, because every once in a while, every like 15 seconds, he does a cast, and you need to interrupt that cast, because it, it does a decent amount of damage. The other issue with this fight is you can't get mana back, depending on your class, so, you know, kind of be safe with your mana as well, don't sort of blow all your mana, try and conserve it as much as possible, because the, the whole mechanic behind this fight was meant to be mana management. So, basically just interrupt his cast to Sear in Flame, and every once in a while he'll go kind of like enraged, uh, that's when I would recommend using a defensive if you need it, if you're you know, a little bit lower geared, because that's where he's going to do the most damage, basically. And after a while, and also DPSing him down to about 50% is fine, you can take him down to 10% if you want, but, you know, 50% is a safe point if you accidentally like auto him or something, you're not accidentally going to kill him. But basically we need to wait for enough of these Saranite Vapors to spawn, that they combine together to make a, a mob. And when that mob spawns is when you'll be able to get the achievement. If you kill any of them, you failed the achievement, basically. So if you do accidentally kill one of the Saranite Vapors, just die, come back in and start the fight again because you've you've already failed the achievement, basically. Um, and yeah, just wait it out. That's all you can really do. And then eventually when the, the all the Saranite Vapors are going to combine together and a mob will spawn, kill that mob, and then you can kill the general no problem whatsoever. And that's it. Not really a difficult achievement, as I said, pop cooldowns during his like enrage phases, when he gets bigger. Interrupt his searing flames, and you should be completely fine with this fight. So with that achievement out of the way, we only need one more now, and we're going to click on the Ulduar teleport before starting the last boss, and you're going to go to the Shattered Walkway. Now, the last achievement is One Light in the Darkness. That basically means we can use one Guardian to help us during the Yogg-Saran fight. If you use any more, you won't get the achievement. Now you could do it with no helpers at all, but you're making things more difficult on yourself for no reward. If this was 25 man, no lights would get you a chance at the mount, but in 10 man the mount doesn't drop, which would be Mimran's head. So we're going to walk over, we're going to talk to Freya, because she's the most useful for pretty much anyone trying to solo this. Talk to Freya, she'll pop down, and then we've got one guardian helping us. As I said, there's no point in having zero on 10 man, because there's no real benefits apart from some like trinkets and stuff like that. So unless you actually want those trinkets, I wouldn't recommend trying to do no light. So now that we have the keeper in the room, what Freya will do for us is she'll summon light beams in the sort of corners of the room. And what they'll do is give you sanity back. Now as you see, I have a hundred sanity right now. If my sanity hits zero, we'll become mind controlled and that's game over pretty much. So the first part of the fight, you want to get these guardians of Yogg-Saron towards um, Sarah. And every time you kill one on top of her, it'll explode, dealing a little bit of damage to you. Or to damage to her as well. Um, make sure you kill them on top of her. Killing them just in the room won't count. You need to be like pretty much directly on top of her. And you can make them spawn a little bit faster by standing in these sort of gas clouds. Every time you walk through a gas cloud, it'll summon another ad. So if you want to make things a little bit faster, you can run through those, and they'll summon the ads a little bit faster than normal. So... Yeah, and literally just keep doing that until she hits 0 HP, and then you'll move on to phase 2. It does take a little bit of a, a time, especially if you're not walking through the pools, because she summons them you know, at a pace that people are meant to be able to handle them in at level 8. To... Now you will get some dots and stuff on you, but they don't really do anything, to be honest. You can see that they may be doing like a K damage, nothing. 
So we need a couple more, and then we'll be able to move on to phase two. One more, maybe? I think this is the last one we need. Eh? No, we need one more. God damn it, Sarah. There we go. There's the last one. And then we can move on to phase two. So in phase two, Yogg-Saron going to spawn. And there's going to be various mechanics going on now. If you're with a friend, one of the mechanics will be like a brain link. And the brain link basically causes you to lose sanity if you're far away from your linked friend, basically. So what you'll need to do is run over and stand next to them. Um, I'm not too sure if it's my totems that cause that, but or cause this, but certain tentacles will grab you. Um, I'm not too sure if it does that because I have a pet out and it realizes I'm not on my own. But even if you do get grabbed, after a few seconds they'll let go of you anyway. And what you want to do is run over to the green light and that will, as you can see here, will start giving me sanity back. The boss will randomly make me lose 9 sanity every few seconds. So you definitely want to stand in the green light to stop you from basically losing all your sanity. There'll be a caster tentacle, there'll be like a big melee tentacle and there'll be like a tentacle that grabs you. Um, kill them if they're nearby but they aren't too big of an issue. And that's really all you need to worry about. Dodge these green sort of laser beams if any come close to you, because they'll make you lose sanity as well. As you can see, there's one of the constrictor tentacles that grabs me, but after a few seconds, it lets go anyway. And basically, we just want to sit in the green light until these portal spawns, and you'll see portals open to Yogg-Saron's mind. You want to run over to them, click them, and head inside. Once inside, you want to kill all the different sort of taggable mobs in here. The ones like dragons, this one's suits of armor, and just basically kill whatever, yeah, whatever's in the room. Now you'll see these like laughing skulls. If you your, if your character looks directly at them, you'll lose sanity. So basically, what you need to do is try and aim it so your character isn't looking at the, the skulls. As you see, I kind of keep my back towards them. If your character looks at them, you'll lose some sanity. As you see there, I lose two sanity and two sanity again. The longer you keep looking at it. So once we kill all the mobs, you'll be able to head into the brain room and DPS down the brain. Um, if you need to, pop some CDs on it just to make sure you get it done in one go. And then you'll be kicked out. So at this point, if you've got a friend with you, get him to kill the tentacles that are outside the room if possible. But if not, if you're on your own, um, just DPS down the boss and he'll do a, like a laugh every once in a while. When he does the laugh, turn your character away from him because that'll cause you to lose sanity as well. And if you've done it right, if you've only got one guardian there, you'll get the achievement. And that will be all your achievements done for your rusted protodrake. So hopefully this guide's helped you out. Look out for more guides coming soon. Sorry it was a bit of a long one, but I wanted to make sure the, the details were, you know, enough that you would be able to understand what you're doing, even if you're doing this on your own. So look out for more guides coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.